Hello, in today's video, I'm going to show you all about how you can improve your NHL 24 HUD team using Team Builder cards. Team Builder cards can be some of the most powerful in the game, especially as we move towards end game content and as progression nears 99 overalls, but they can be extremely costly. I'll show you some of my strategies for keeping the coin toss down. Coin toss? Coin, what? I'll share some of my strategies for keeping that coin cost down and how you can save towards these cards most efficiently. If you stick around, I'll also be providing my recommendation for whether or not I think you should be making these Team Builder cards, whether you're worth their time. No, you're definitely worth their time, whether they're worth your time. Let's dig in. The first step in building Team Builder cards is to find your way over to the Team Builder sets, which are found under the Exchange tab. So let's right bump over to Exchange, click into Sets, and then we're going to pop our way over to the Team Builder sets. Now, when you're starting out, you're going to want to start all the way to the right, for the most part. That's where the 32 NHL teams are found. The left side has the most up-to-date Team Builder cards. You can see there's some pretty good ones. You've got a 93 Jason Arnott, 93 Rick Nash, 93 Larry Robinson, and a 93 Sammy Sallow. The previous release of Team Builders had a 90 Mike Badano, a 90 Brendan Shanahan, a 90 John LeClaire, a 90 Adrian O'Coin, a 90 Willie Mitchell, and a 90 Robin Regeer. Prior to that, the first enhanced team builders were Luke Robitaille, Kevin Lowe, Sergei Zubov, Jeremy Roenick, Patrice Brisebois, Bill Guerin, Brian Leach, and Joe Neuendijk. We're not quite ready for those cards yet. I got to strip this down to the frame and show you the basics. So once you start getting into the NHL teams, like the Ducks, the Coyotes, the Bruins, etc., 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 you're going to see that there are 25 cards required to complete each set. Now, I'll show you the Coyotes, for example. You'll notice that you need 1574 overall gold players cards from the Arizona Coyotes. In addition, you're going to need 1080 plus overall. Now, you can use 25 total 80 overall cards because that qualifies as 74 plus, but you cannot use 25 74 plus. You have to have at least 1080 overalls. Now, you may remember in previous videos where I told you do not use gold NHL player cards for trade-ins towards power-up icons or X-Factor sets or anything else other than team builders. And this is why. It takes quite a few of them to be able to get yourself a team builder card for each NHL team. Now, if we were starting the game, I would tell you don't trade in your tradable cards because you can sell them on the auction house for more and then you can fish around and find a better deal for the same card a couple days later when the market comes down a little bit, get them for a little bit cheaper and save yourself some coins. But if you don't have a lot of time to spend doing that and you don't really care about playing the auction house then just throw the damn things into sets and forget about it because honestly this game gives us enough to think about you don't need to get into the habit of overthinking it too okay so i just auto filled my collection uh and i'm good to go i've got my 25 out of 25. now i'm going to point out really quick that you have to be careful with the way that you fill this set because if you auto fill and you have the wrong combination of cards it might actually show up that you have like 24 out of 25 but if you find yourself a couple short back everything out, and then go and manually fill in your 15, 74 to 79s, and then your 80 and ups. So I'll do that really quick. So if I wanted to go in and make sure that I'm using all 15 of my 74 overalls, I'm gonna search the collection and do it manually. And you can see that I have too, too many 80, 80 overalls. So I wouldn't want to waste those 80 overalls, especially if some of them are tradable, because if I'm only going to do this set once, and you can do it multiple times. So if I plan on only doing this set once, I'm going to want to sell back my 80s because they're higher value and they're tradable. So I'm not going to put my tradable 80s that I have extras of. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in my 15, 74 to 79s. Bam. Okay. Now I'm going to go down and you'll see the only options I have left are for 80 plus overalls. So I'm going to pop into that. Now, for example, I only need 10 cards to complete the set, but I have 12 that I can use. I'm not going to use the Vimelka because he's a high overall and he's tradable. So I'll throw him in the auction house and get some coins back for him because I don't plan on doing this Arizona Coyote set again. So I'm going to select the first 10 80 overalls or 80 plus overalls untradable or tradable. I've kept my two tradable 81 overall Vimelkas, and now I got a set. As usual, to complete a set, I'm going to press Y or triangle on PlayStation. I'm going to hit complete set. I got to go to the inbox, and there is our Shane Doan card. Shane Doan is the Arizona Coyotes team builder. 
Now, I'm not that interested in keeping Shane Doan, so I'm going to send him to my collection. I'm going to hit the B or circle button to go back. And right now, I'm working towards Joe Neuendijk. So I'm going to go into here, and I'm going to autofill that. And look, there's Shane Doan. Now, you'll see that I have two 84s in there, ready and waiting to go for four more 84 team builders to unlock Joe Neuendijk. That'll be a great day until I then have to make a decision as to whether or not I want to keep Joe Neuendijk or perhaps work towards another couple of these 87 overalls, which can be traded in two at a time for the 90 overalls. So let's say hypothetically, I keep making the team builders for all the teams. I get myself 12 total 84 team builders. I put six into Joe Neuendijk and Bam, now I'm going to have an 87 Garen and an 87 Neuendijk. If I don't want to use those in my lineup, I can pop over to the 90 overall cards, and I can pick one of these because I can trade two. Let's say it's Brendan Shanahan. You see I have now a set where I can trade in two 87 overalls. That would be my Neuendijk and my Garen. I would fill those in, I would complete the set, and then I would get a Brendan Shanahan. If I were to do that process again and get 12 more NHL team builders, put them into the Zubov set and the Ronick set, then I could take those two and put them in yet another one. Let's say Mike Madano. Then I would have Brendan Shanahan and Mike Madano. That gives me two 90 overalls, which I could then go and pop in to a set here for the 93 overalls. Say I want Jason Arnott and Larry Robinson. So essentially, in order to build up to the 93 overalls, you need to work your way up this ladder, starting with 684 overalls to unlock 187. Then you got to get six more 84 overalls to unlock a second 87. Then you can trade those two 87s in for 190. But you can't now get to 93 without doing that process all over again. So six more 84s to unlock an 87, six more 84s to unlock a second or at this point fourth 87. Those two 87s go into the 90 sets, pick two 90s, make them, put now the two 90s that you have into your set for the 93. And that's not even the end. That's just where we're at now. If you want to keep going, we're going to have a 96 overall set at some point. Or maybe it'll be like a 95 and then a 98 and then a 99. We don't know exactly what path they're going to take, but there's going to be at least two more iterations of team builder releases. Meaning you're going to have to keep collecting these cards if you want to work up to those top end team builders once this is finally completed. So here's the big question. What should you do? My answer, I have no freaking idea. I honestly don't. It depends on where you're at. It depends on what you want to do. It depends on what your goals are in the game. I can give you a couple scenarios and run you through what I would recommend. For example, I'm doing a theme team. My theme team is related to New Jersey Devils. For whatever reason, the New Jersey Devils are all over the team builders at the higher level. So it's a no-brainer for me to say, with little effort and just collecting cards that I'm getting out of packs and not really using for anything else, I can work my way up towards those top-end team builders and hopefully get, you know, for example, um, the Arnott and the Larry Robinson for sure. I might still want like a Joe Neuendijk because he's got good face-offs. I might want Brendan Shanahan because he's a winger. I could keep those cards in my lineup for a little bit until I work my way up and to get the Jason R not like there's so many different ways you can go about doing it. Of course, you could in the end get to the point where I have two 93s and the 96 has come out and neither one of them fit my theme team. That would be disappointing, obviously, but you know, I'm playing this game for fun. You, you may also just want to use the resources for power up collectibles. Maybe you just want to go the X factor route and put together as many X factors as you can. So there's just different routes you can take with it. I don't see anything else that I would be doing with my 74 to 82 overall NHL gold player cards other than kind of sticking them on theme teams. And my theme team rule is pretty much I can go buy a base card in the auction house. So I don't know. I'm not that worried about it. I'm going to fill them in. I'm going to see what happens. The other option would be sell the tradable cards. And let's just you know hypothetically say I have all 25 for all 32 teams that are all tradable. That's 800 tradable cards. That's 800 things I got to list on the auction house. Again, this series is not meant for people that have that kind of time. So 
I just don't think that's worth the squeeze. I'd rather just get the higher cards, have fun playing with them. So what you decide to do is going to be really driven by what you want in the end. These cards are very good at the end. They're usually big, they're usually strong, they're usually fast, they can usually snipe corners. So if you're just going for the best overall team, it's probably in your best interest to start saving towards those. And if you are saving towards those, make sure that you're trying to target rewards in the squad battles and the rivals that are going to give you NHL player packs, because that'll help you build these up faster. All right, so there you have it. How to build team builders to improve your NHL 24 hunt lineup. Again, the direction you choose to go with these is entirely up to you. I think they're worth it, especially if you're trying to play into the end game. Uh, but if you have theme teams in mind and you only want specific cards, you can stop at those cards and enjoy the heck out of them. I also wanted to quickly thank those of you who have been watching the videos. It's been absolutely humbling to think that I got more than 10 to 15 views when I started doing this. I'm like, yeah, it'll be great. Six of my friends will watch and um, at least I'll help them. And I think my last video was over 700 or something. And it's mind blowing to me. Um, but I, hopefully that means that people are finding value in them and that, that you're finding some sort of tips and tricks. But if I leave something out, you know, one of the viewers from a couple of videos ago popped in and left a trick that I didn't even know about. So I'm not an expert by any means. I'm just trying to have some fun with this. So if you want to help out and be a positive member of the community, please pop in there, pop into those comments. I, it doesn't bother me at all. I just want everyone to be informed and be happy. So um, thank you again for taking the time. And I'll take a second to plug my Twitch stream. I've been streaming on Friday nights the last couple of weeks. It's been a learning experience there too, but I'm having some fun with it. And that really has been legitimately just for real life friends, but um, it's, it's pretty chill. We're just hanging out a little bit. I don't take the game too seriously, so I might get frustrated here or there, but I'm never going to rant and rave and rage quit. So I guess if you're looking for that content, probably not my, my channel. But anyway, thanks again so much. I really appreciate you checking out the video. Have a great rest of your day or night. Take care.